In this video, we're going to talk about how to write the electron configuration using noble gas notation. Now, what we have here is the element fluorine, and there's two numbers of interest. The number on top, that is the smaller of the two numbers, represents the atomic number of fluorine. Now, for an atom, that tells you the number of protons and electrons, which are the same. For ions, those numbers differ. So that would represent the number of protons when dealing with ions. The bottom number that you see here is the average atomic mass of fluorine. It's the larger of the two numbers, and we're not going to use that in this particular video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to write down the sublevels. We have the S sublevel, the P sublevel, and the D sublevel. S can hold up to two electrons, P can hold up to six and D can hold up to 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the electron configuration until the sum of the exponents add up to 9. So we're going to start with 1s. So s can hold 2 electrons. And then after 1s is 2s, which can also hold up to 2 electrons. Then after 2s, it's 2p, then 3s. Now p can hold up to 6 electrons. But we don't need 6. We only need 5 to get up to 9 because 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9. So this right here is what is known as the ground state electron configuration of the element fluorine. Now our goal is to write the noble gas notation of this particular element. So we need to be familiar with the noble gases. Helium you could find this, by the way, on the right side of your periodic table. Hopefully you have that with you in front of you at this moment. Helium has an atomic number of 2. Next is neon, which has an atomic number of 10. And then below that is the noble gas argon, which has an atomic number of 18. Followed by that is krypton, which is 36. Xenon has a noble gas of 54. And radon has a noble gas of 86. We don't need to go past that. Now, we need to select the noble gas with an atomic number that is just under 9. And the one we're going to use in this case is helium. So helium has two electrons, which will replace the 1s2. Everything else we're going to write after helium. 2s2, 2p5. So this right here is the answer. That is how we can write the electron configuration of the element fluorine using noble gas notation. Now, for the sake of practice, let's try a few more examples. So from this point on, you can pause the video if you want to try it yourself and then play the video to see if you have the right answer. So let's begin by writing the sublevels. 1s, 2s, 3s. Now, sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table. So I don't think we need to go below 3s. If needed, you can always change it. So let's start with the first sublevel, 1s. We know that s can hold up to 2, so this is going to be 1s2. Our goal is to get up to the atomic number 16. After 1s is 2s, which can also hold two electrons. And then after that, it's 2p, which can hold six electrons. Right now, the total is 10. After 2p, we have 3s, which can hold two electrons. So right now, we have a total of 12. To get to 16, we need four more. So we're not going to use all six electrons in a 3p sublevel. We're only going to use four of them. Because if we add up 2, 2, 6, 2, and 4, that gives us 16. So what we have here is the ground state electron configuration of the element sulfur. Now, let's write down some of our noble gases. We know that helium has two electrons. Neon has an atomic number of 10. And argon has an atomic number of 18. Which of these three noble gases should we use? So we want to use the noble gas that has an atomic number that is less than 16. So both of these 
have an atomic number that is less than 16. Argon is out. Now, out of the noble gases that have an atomic number less than 16, we want to pick the highest of these, and that's going to be neon. It's under 16, but it's the closest one to 16. Now, neon has an atomic number of 10. So neon is equivalent to 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we're going to replace this with neon and then write what we see after that. So neon, 3s2, 3p4. So neon has an atomic number of 10. And then if we add 2 and 4 to it, it's going to give us 16. Thus, this right here is the noble gas notation of the element sulfur. Here's another example that you could try. So let's write the sublevels. Cadmium is in the fifth row of the periodic table. So we're going to go up to 5s. And we're going to introduce the 4f sublevel as well. Now we need to get up to an atomic number of 48. So let's start from the beginning. We have 1s2. And then after that is 2s2. And then it's going to be 2p6, 3s2. But let's keep track of the total so far. After 2p6, we have a total of 10. And now let's continue. It's going to be 3p, then 4s. So p can hold up to 6, s can hold up to 2. So here we have a total of 20. Next, it's going to be 3d, then 4p, then 5s. So we have 3d10, which gives us a total of 30 now. And then it's going to be 4p6, 5s2. So that gives us a total of 38. Now, after 5s is 4d, and d can hold up to 10. So now, this will give us a total of 48. Thus, this is the ground state electron configuration of the element cadmium. Now, we need to identify which noble gas we should use to simplify this expression. So keep in mind, helium has an atomic number of 2, neon has an atomic number of 10, argon has an atomic number of 18, krypton has an atomic number of 36, xenon has an atomic number of 54, and radon has an atomic number of 86. So which of these six noble gases should we use to write the noble gas notation of the element cadmium? Well, we don't want to use any noble gases that has an atomic number that is greater than 48. So we can eliminate xenon and radon. And out of the ones that have an atomic number that's less than 48, we want to choose the highest of those. So that's going to be krypton. Now krypton goes up to 36. This is 30. And then if you include 4p6, everything up to here is 36. So we can replace krypton with that. What's left over is what we're going to write. And that is 5s2, 4d10. So this is the way in which we can write the electron configuration of cadmium using noble gas notation. So that's basically it for this video. Now, there are other types of problems associated with electron configuration that you may want to take a look at when you get a chance. Because if you're studying for a test, you may need to know how to write the electron configuration for elements that are exceptions. These include copper, chromium, and some other elements. And also, you may need to know how to write the electron configuration of ions, including transition metal ions. So for those of you who need help with that topic, just type in that title in the YouTube search bar. If you type in electron configuration exceptions, organic chemistry tutor, I have a video on that and it should come up. 
So that's basically it for this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.